Number one, use the limit definition of a derivative to calculate the derivative of this guy. So I know that you guys um, started off um, already on Friday. So um, let's write this kind of like how it should look officially. Um, the limit definition would look like the limit as um, h goes to zero of x plus h cubed minus x plus h there, and that is the f of x plus h. Um, then you would subtract um, the entire x cubed minus 3x. Remember this should go away, um, because the whole point is that the h in the denominator goes uh, gets factored out in some way. Okay. All right, so with that, then we will um, use the binomial expansion. That's pretty much why we took an hour um, out of our way uh, this year, is so that we could handle something like this without too much weirdness. And remember, the x's drop a degree, and then the h appears. Uh, and then the triangle number, you know, Pascal's triangle, um, appears. And there's no number in front here, so this guy will just drop a degree, and then h will go up until finally h goes to the third degree. And then that's a 1, 3, 3, 1 from the triangle. And then we've got minus x uh, to the third, and then we'll say plus x, uh, 3x. Okay, all over h, and of course this is the limit as h goes to 0. Okay, so it looks like uh, this guy and this guy will cancel out. Um, where's the plus 3x? Am I missing that? Oh yeah, I totally missed that. Um, I missed this guy right here, so minus 3x minus 3h. I totally missed that. I missed this piece right here. All right, so I was going to say, because if it doesn't cancel out, then something's wrong. Um, so this guy's gone, that guy's gone. So it looks like we have that minus 3h right there on the end. Okay, um, now we know the answer to this guy. It's 3x squared minus 3. That, that's the answer. And if we don't get that, something's up. Okay, we know the shortcut to this. So here, um, um, we're going to divide everything that we can by h. And every single term here has to have an h in order for this to work. If it doesn't, then something's wrong. Like if you miss this and this, then you're going to have an x there, and then you can't actually divide by a. My dogs are fighting, by the way. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we haven't plugged in, uh, substituted in h yet, so he's going to go to 3x squared. This will become 3x with an h uh, plus h to the second power minus 3. Okay, now I've divided all four of these guys. One, two, three. Uh, do minus three h to the right. I put him over here. Okay, so minus three, and then they've all been divided by h. So now we're actually ready to substitute an h for zero. So this is zero. This guy would go to zero, and you are left with three x squared. Now notice that I've gotten rid of the limit now. 3x squared minus 3. As soon as I plug in the 0, then the limit has been done. Okay? All right, and there's our final answer. So, yep, so common mistake there. I just missed that guy. All right, so now we're going to find all the points of this guy that has horizontal tangent lines. So, horizontal tangent lines happen when the derivative equals 0. So, that's what we're going to shoot for. We're going to actually find the derivative of this guy. This is a quartic. And he's positive, so he'll have something like this. So um, where he has uh, horizontal tangent lines could possibly be 1, 2, and 3. I could possibly have three answers here because that's where um, the curve actually changes direction, and those would be horizontal tangent lines. Okay. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. All right, that would be 4 times 1 half is 2. Then he will drop a degree. Then we're going to get minus 2x. Okay, so that's a derivative. Now let's set this guy equal to zero. Okay, we absolutely can do that. And uh, what we do is we factor. So let's factor out a two and an x so that we get x squared. I think we might have already done this one on the board. Okay, then zero, two x, and then x plus one, x minus one. 
Okay, so this is the difference of two squares. We took out a two x. This is basically all we got for cubics. You know, you have to be able to take something out or use the rational root theorem. And um, I haven't seen any problems uh, using the rational root theorem. Those will probably come uh, come later. So it looks like our x values would be zero, negative one, and positive one, and that would be the negative one, zero, and one. So something like that. All right. Uh, find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function y equals cosecant x at the point where x equals pi over 2. Okay, so we want the tangent line, but the tangent line requires a slope and a point. So what I can do is I know that the slope, I'm going to look for this guy. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to look for that. I'm going to take the derivative of both of uh, this, okay? Um, but for the point, what I want to do is I want to actually figure out um, what the cosecant of pi over 2 actually is. Because for the point, I have pi over 2, but I need to figure out where, where we're actually at, okay? So I need to plug in pi over 2 here, and um, what I remember is, is that cosecant is the sine... Uh, 1 over sine. So the pi over 2, the sine is 1, so it looks like this is 1. So pi over 2, comma 1. So let's figure out what the um, what the uh, derivative of this guy is. And I think we already did this, unfortunately. Um, oh, he's the cosecants. So the cosecants, I think it's negative cosecant cotangent. Okay, can I look that up? Um, negative cosecant x cotangent x. I know I could look those up in my notes. Okay, can I look here? Um, yeah, anyways, um, I'm going to go with it. I think this is the truth. Um, so this is the derivative formula. So now let's go ahead and plug in a pi over 2 in there and see what we get. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this guy at x equals pi over 2. Okay. So we already said that the cosecant of pi over 2 is 1, so that would become negative 1. So now we have to figure out what the cotangent of pi over 2 is. The cotangent of pi over 2. Well, what is tangent of pi over 2? Sine is 1. I don't think he is actually... Um, cotangent would be the flip, so then we would have... The sine would be 1 and the cosine would be 0. Okay, so this is actually 0. Okay. So, this means... And you can figure that out by in your calculator. You could just go... You know, you could do that. All right. So that's 0. So that means the slope is 0. Which means, then, if we come over here we would just with a slope of oh okay so if it's just zero this means that if we put it into point slope it would be zero x minus pi over two uh, plus one and so since this is all zero we really just have y equals one okay all right let's do this here Suppose a position equation for a moving object is given by s of t, okay, so that's the original function, this guy, where s of t is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds. Find the velocity of the object when t equals pi. No problem. Um, we know that the velocity equation is the first derivative of the position function, so we're going to rewrite this guy, secant t uh, plus 2t, and so the v of t comes from taking the derivative of the original function, which is pretty amazing. And the secant t is actually uh, the derivative of this guy equals secant t times tangent t um, plus 2. Okay, plus 2. Okay, and now we're going to... Um, now this is the velocity equation. This means that when I plug in a value at a particular location, in here, I get the speed. In here, I get the location. Okay, it's it's beautiful, um, beautifully orderly universe we have here. So we're gonna throw uh, pi 
at time for time. So v of pi equals secant pi times tangent of pi uh, plus 2. All right, let's see what we got. Pi secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine of pi is actually negative 1. So this would be 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. And then the tangent of pi is when cosine is tangent of pi is when cosine is cotangent of pi. When you're at pi, cosine is negative 1 and sine is 0. So that's 0. Okay. Plus 2. Alright, looks like it's 2. Alright, and what does that mean? We're talking about the velocity and we're talking about meters. We're talking about seconds, so it's 2 meters per second. Okay? Five minutes.